got a new setup as you can see, I've got my own tripod uh, ready for the next load of videos coming up in the summer. I thought I'd do this video because uh, I wanted to discuss the fact that I had an issue with one of my plants and you all know about pineapple guava and last year um, if you remember in one of my videos I was I said that my pineapple guava was giving me problems I mean I suspected something was wrong because the fruit set wasn't great uh, the leaves were going yellow and I thought there's something not quite right here so the other day we'd initially had a cold spell you see and it had been very wet over the winter there'd been a lot of rainfall so I checked the plant out and the plant was showing curled leaves and dropping a lot of leaves dropping quite a lot of leaves uh, in one go and that's always an issue that's always uh, that's always like an alarm cause for concern when that happens so I was like wondering what it was so I did some research and I discovered it was either and it could have been numerous things it could have been because it was too cold well we had had a cold spell but it wasn't that cold um, it was no colder than it had been in previous years so why the cold would necessarily affect the plant it didn't make sense to me then it said it could be dry and I thought <laughs> there's no chance it's dry because I'm on clay soil and anyone who knows clay soil knows that clay soil Generally, in the winter, it's just not dry. So um, I put that one to the side. Then they said about the wet soil. So wet can cause problems with plants uh, if they're not getting oxygen to the roots and the root rot and all those things. It can cause problems. So I thought I really need to do an emergency wheat plant here because obviously something's wrong. The soil is too wet for whatever reason, probably. I'm better off elevating it. So I made the snap decision to go ahead and elevate it. Uh, it was an emergency planting, so I didn't have time to make a video uh, on site. I had to just get it done. Um, but I'll, I'll run through, and on this video, I'm going to discuss like uh, it's going to be a short video, but I'm going to discuss the benefits of um, doing what I did and planting on that mound. So yeah, so it's called a mound and the, and the game is to elevate your plants to help drainage and water management. That is the goal. So I thought I'd do that. So in order to do this, this morning I got up and I, um, and I prepared the soil. I dug the plant out. It was actually relatively easy. I did, um, I got all the root system, which was great. Um, and I think that I got enough so I can avoid transplant shock which is a big issue when you're digging plants up transplant shock can eventually unfortunately kill a plant so I got the root I put it to the side I got the, put the plant to the side and then I started working on the soil now the one thing I noticed and I'm gonna put videos I'm gonna put sorry photos up of what um, I found and my progress uh, while I did it so what I found was a few years back, um, I'd put grit in the bottom. Now at the time, that was the in thing to do, is put grit in the bottom, it'll help drainage. But over the last few years, gardeners and horticulturalists have really generally said, don't do that. The, the, the opinion on it has changed. And you can see in the picture that I'm about to show now, um, why? And here's that picture now. Now, unfortunately, what had happened is the grit that I put in had basically turned into a sump because it was, the water was going through it, but it couldn't get out of the clay. So the clay was creating a pot. So all that water was uh, staying in the bottom in the wet winters we were having. And it was in contact with the roots and it was like sour water it was not good it was not good and you can see from the picture it was basically wet cement and no plant can do well in wet cement hence the reason why the leaves were falling off so against somewhat against um, what you might casually think to do I tamped and like got the uh, rake and tamped 
the soil down to get the air pockets out of the I kept it in I kept all of that in but I tamped it down I consolidated it and that goes against every intuition that garden has but what I needed to do was stop the water building up and slow the water percolation into the soil down then I laid up soil into that and then created a dome a dome over the soil bank on there and again consolidated that soil to reduce how quickly the water drains through again might seem counterintuitive but when you've got a sump at bottom you don't want the water collecting that quickly you want to give it a chance to slowly drain out next thing I did was I started to put the soil in the clay I did use clay by the way so it was, it was important that I used clay in this situation uh, it, it, it's now thought by many horticulturalists and landscapers that you should if you're replanting or planting a plant you should plant with your native soil especially in situations where you're elevating um, planting because this helps um, the plant get over transplant shock and it helps it sort of settle into its environment quicker and of course um, with regard to clay if clay is raised drainage isn't an issue and clay is, clay is a fantastic soil to garden with so there we go I repot I, I tamped down with clay and that was the bottom layer then what I did was I graded up the soil so at the very bottom I had mostly clay it was 90% clay and 10% topsoil and a mix together. As I raised the level of the mound towards the top I increased the topsoil content and reduced the clay content but there was still majority clay so even at the top there was 60% clay and 40% topsoil and the idea behind this was to conserve the moisture because clay uh, based soils lose moisture very quickly when it's dry in the summer um, so it was important to put as much organic type of topsoil organic matter etc etc into that sort of mix to stop the loss of moisture which would badly affect this species so you can see from the second photo here what I was doing you can see that I was mounding up around the plant um, and that worked well that that absolutely worked um, and it went quite well um, I then I tried to um, then mound up over and create a fairly um, non I didn't want it too steep because of water runoff uh, so I tried to get a fairly shallow conical feature and uh, it seems to have worked so I'm going to put the picture up now with the with the um, finished product so you can see um, what happened when I planted it you can see the end result and it's gone quite well and I'm happy with it and I think this plant will absolutely get over the transplant no problem whatsoever the replanting was very easy it was very non-laborious apart from lifting the plant out and putting it back in that was a bit awkward but you know it, it was done and yeah it was just something that would have rather avoided but if i had left it i'm convinced the plant would have slowly died because you can see the cement on the earlier photo the cement that it created at the bottom just no plant could survive that it was it was really nasty i'm just glad to have got that done now some of the benefits to what i've done interestingly enough apart from draining away the water which is imperative um, with species like feijoa is also it will warm up quicker in spring that is important because it used to stay cold for until may at least june and slow and growth was slow to occur and flowering was slow and eventually flowering got lethargic and the, and the fruits didn't form well so I'm hoping this will definitely change the situation and it will change the ballpark as far as flowering and fruiting are concerned
because the sun is important as it will generate the warmth that this plant loves but uh yeah and i've tried to make it so it keeps as much moisture in as possible now in terms of the future i'm considering doing it to other plants like the pomegranate um, that hasn't been performing great i don't think there's been no flowers i feel if i was to mound this as well it would react much better so yeah um somewhat of a success but time will tell of course um, it's been a sunny day here i checked the soil after i've done it a few hours after and it was warm which is great because it has been sunny sunny today and it's been a lovely day so we will see i will keep you updated on it and uh, yeah so uh, no doubt there will be a few more videos on this um as the summer progresses as the sp late spring into summer progresses i mean so yeah i'll uh, i'll leave you with that for now i hope you found this interesting um and uh, i hope it's helped to people who have a, a similar situation where they're gardening in really poor clay soil which is slow to warm up in winter it gives you the alternate uh, sorry in spring it never warmed in winter is it but it's slow to warm up in the spring and it gives you that alternative to be able to um, grow better in mound gardening it's definitely worth checking up on mound gardening if you're in an area of poor drainage go ahead and give it a go because it's so much better uh, and it's what comes out of it at the end I think will determine how useful this is and I'll keep you updated on that like I said so thanks for watching this video uh, please like this and subscribe and uh, I'll see you next time for another video. Take care.